Hi, welcome to this video on an introduction to modal harmony. Before we can really appreciate the uniqueness of modal harmony, we have to remind ourselves how it is different from what we call functional harmony. Functional harmony is based on a major scale, like this one, which, which has within it a tritone, which creates a lot of energy of resolution. Here it is in there's our tritone, the F and the, and the D and the B. And it is associated with the five chord, a chord rooted on the fifth degree of the scale. It's built on top of that root. And when that structure is played, it creates tension, which is then released when the leading tone goes up a half step. And when the uh, seventh of the chord, which is the fourth scale degree, goes down a half step to the third of the chord. So you notice that the tritone is created by notes which are at points of a half step. The fourth scale degree is a half step above the third, which is one of the more stable tones in the key. And the seventh scale degree is a half step away from the root, which is the most sca uh, stable tone in the key. Factors that go into creating functional harmony, but this one is the the one that is most defi the most defining characteristic. A dominant 5 to 1 cadence or the, a dominant chord resolving down a perfect fifth to a target chord is a main characteristic of functional harmony. Um, the other scale that's most common in uh, functional harmony is what would be the relative minor of the major scale. It's derived from the same notes as the major key um, and in, is also could be thought of as a mode, but the way it's used in functional harmony is by altering it. So here's um, a direct transference of these notes down to here, just move down an octave. You can see that's an A natural, and now the A natural is down here, and we get um, the sound of a minor tonality. The difference is that in its pure form, the minor relative minor does not give us a leading tone. It does not give us a tone right here, which is a half step below the root. That's a whole step. So somewhere along the line, people started raising that seventh degree, creating the harmonic minor scale. And what that allows us to do is create a raised seventh degree in our chord, our five chord, and we now have a five to one cadence built on the fifth scale degree of the minor scale. We, if we didn't do that raising of the seventh degree, we wouldn't have it. But we do that with, with the use of the harmonic minor scale. And now the relative minor key also has a five to one cadence. The all important resolution of a tritone um, the leading tone going up a half step to the root and the uh, fourth scale degree going down to the third of the one chord. Okay, so that's functional harmony in, in, uh, in its most basic form. Other, for, other functions are used, uh, modal interchange, um, subdominant function, tonic function, so on, are all part of this big picture. But it all revolves around this one central defining characteristic, a five to one cadence, a dominant chord going down a fifth to a target chord, and that is called dominant function. Now, how does that differ from modal harmony? Here's a chart showing their familiar diatonic functional harmony in a major key. Here's our tonic function chord, subdominant function, dominant function, and the two five one is the most typical cadence with the of course including the five to one here's the modes from that same C major note collection you can have a mode based on the root of the C major scale uh, the way the difference between the Ionian mode and a major scale is how uh, the harmony is used which you'll learn about in a minute and then when you just transpose those notes you start C major study on D you have a D Dorian scale and then you have a C major scale study on E and you have an E Phrygian scale and so on and all the half steps and all the intervals from the root are changed by this. This is a whole step, whole step, half step. This is a whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, etc. This is a half step. This is a scale that starts with a half step. 
And it's a good idea to just play through them um, and get a sense of them. And Dorian would be D in the bass. We get. Phrygian, of course. Lydian. That's a sharp 11 in it. Mixolydian. of all, the one that's least stable is Locrian. See why in a minute why almost uh, no music is ever written in a Locrian mode. It's just used as a chord scale for um, writing melodies and improvising. With all the scale degrees written in, and as we transpose, as we start on different notes of the scale that uh, become a one, the intervals above the root change and you start getting things like flat three with a major six and a flat seven or flat two, flat three, flat six, flat seven, and so on. And one way to sort of understand how this affects things musically is if we reorganize music around a new tonal center of gravity with these different intervals, we get the music takes on a totally different vibe. So let's take a really simple tune. Sometimes it's Mary Had a Little Lamb with typical uh, five to one harmony underneath it. Now, what would happen if we transpose this to a mode? So we're gonna take, we're gonna still use the notes of a C major scale, but we're gonna move everything up a whole step to get the sound of Dorian. Um, you can see everything is a second higher. There are no sharps or flats, so it's still the same notes, but the intervals above the root have changed. This was a major third above the root before, and now this new melody note transposed is now a minor third above the root, and so on. And so the resulting sound will be very different. Here it is as Phrygian. I've moved everything up another whole step. Okay, so the vibe of the music changes a lot when you change the intervals above the root, and that another word for that would be mo the mood of the music changes, and hence the word mode. Different modes, different moods. Uh, let's look at it parallel for a minute by looking, for example, at our Phrygian mode here, that we have an interval above the root that's a half step uh, right here, a flat two, very different sound from a major second, flat three also. Um, in this particular melody, we're not using the sixth and seventh degree, but those changes are quite radical. So let's look at that in a, at a, in a parallel way. Here's our C major scale. It's back to C major again. I'm going to alter it so that all the thirds are flat thirds again, above a C root and the, all the seconds are flat seconds. And I'm going to change it to Phrygian by doing that. This is a parallel way of looking at everything. That's the flat three, that's the flat two, and then these are still flat. It's just that the rule of accidentals means that I don't have to keep rewriting them. Here's the sound of it in C Phrygian. really weird because we know what uh, Mary Had a Little Lamb originally sounded like. It still worked in terms of having a feeling of a one and then a cadence back to one. Okay, um, and that's because the structure of the scale along with uh, almost all the other modes has a few characteristics which allow it to be used as a primary scale. Book, each mode has its own unique 
placement of the half steps relative to the first scale degree. And that's what one of the things that makes it sound unique and like Phrygian and not like Dorian and so on. The triad built on each mode's first degree has a perfect fifth above its root. And Locrian is the exception, and that's why it's so unstable. It can't be used as a resolution sound. But that perfect fifth above the first scale degree is, is vital to creating a sound of resolution. Each mode has an overall quality that is either major or minor. And again, Locrian is an exception because it has a flat five, so it doesn't really have a minor triad. It doesn't have a major triad, of course, so it's really diminished triad is the essence of that sound, and that's neither major nor minor. So each of these modes, so if we put Locrian aside for a minute, each of these modes has a major or minor quality. And so what we're looking for is how do we organize our music around these scales when we don't have a five to one cadence? And the answer lies in something called the characteristic pitch. The characteristic pitch is something which gives the mode a unique sound in comparison to some other familiar sounds. So the, maybe the easiest way to think of it is as the Ionian or the major scale is sort of the uh, primary major scale or the most common major scale. And the Aeolian, the natural minor, is the most common minor scale. And if we compare the, all the other major modes to Ionian and we compare all the other minor modes to Aeolian, we reveal the characteristic pitch. So in Ionian, we have these intervals. Let's look at another major uh, mode. Here's Lydian. This is a major mode. And you'll notice the one difference between Ionian and Ly uh, Lydian, the only difference is the sharp four scale degree, is the characteristic pitch of Lydian. It's the note that helps it stand out. In the world of major scales, it's the one that has a sharp four. Both of them have a seven, a major seven, so that's not unique but this has the sharp four, so that's its characteristic pitch. Now let's compare G mixo to C Ionian. All the notes are the same, except for the flat seven in mixo, as opposed to the seven in Ionian. Both of them have an, a fourth scale degree, a perfect fourth, but this one has a, a flat seven, and that has a major seven. The pitch of Mixolydian is flat seven. Now let's go over to minor. Aeolian is our basic minor scale. It has a flat three, a flat six, and a flat seven. Um, how is, a, let's compare another minor scale to Aeolian. Dorian has a flat three, so that's not unique. But Dorian has a major sixth, and Aeolian has a flat six. So that's its, that's its characteristic pitch. Let's compare to Phrygian. Well, Aeolian and Phrygian both have a flat six, and they both have a flat seven, but only Phrygian has a flat two um, with all those other pitches. So that's its characteristic pitch. So of the six modes that we're talking about right now, excluding Locrian, um, they all have clear characteristic pitches by comparing them to their uh, primary a major or minor scale. Um, the major modes compared to Ionian and the minor modes compared to Aeolian. So as soon as possible, you need to memorize these characteristic pitches because these are going to be the things that help us to organize our modal music. Going down to Locrian, it's treated as a standalone sort of oddball mode. Um, it cannot be really used as a primary scale because it doesn't have a perfect fifth and there's no way to f create a feeling of resolution. Here's the, uh, here's the um, sound of the one chord. No matter what I do, if I do a 5 to 1 cadence, it still doesn't sound like it's a resolution. It's like a question followed by another question. So because of that, it's only used as a auxiliary in an auxiliary function, like when you're improvising over a minor 7 flat 5 chord, you could use this collection of notes, for example. But music is not written in this mode, generally. But it is written in all the other six modes. Art, and this shows all our characteristic pitches. Um, in Ionian, it's the fourth scale degree. I mean, in Dorian, Phrygian, and so on. You can see them all there. You should memorize them as soon as possible. And in Locrian, it has two characteristic pitches because it has flat two like Phrygian, but it's flat two in relation to flat five, those two together. At this point, you should go to the next video, part two.